I want to start with today. How are things today in your world and, and the things that uh, you track and follow here for Nationwide and our members? This is one where the amount of activity has increased significantly over the last several months. The DOE has done a great job of raising the education level, raising the awareness of the program and what's what it will require to get the program to be launched. Welcome into the Independent Thinking Podcast. This is your host, Rob Stott. We are at the end of October, uh, early November now, and finally clear, uh, not that I didn't appreciate them all, but finally clear of the primetime podcast. So excited to get back to our regularly scheduled episodes and uh, fresh content for you guys as we look ahead to next year in San Antonio in March and getting some uh, more great content for you. But as we dive back into our uh, regular podcast interviews, this week we've got Mr. Frank Santner. Uh, when, and when you talk about individuals at this company who are uh, we're blessed to have access to uh, and who are just absolute experts on uh, the topics that they cover and, and have been around this space and understand you know, the needs of independent retailers, Frank uh, would certainly be at the, among the top uh, people on my list here at Nationwide Marketing Group. And today we get to dive into a topic that's been near and dear to him um, over the last couple of years, and that's the Inflation Reduction Act. And uh, a story that he continues to follow and really, I, I want to say, lead on uh, when it comes to not only just the independent channel, he's a leader for it, uh, for the independent channel in this space and you know, around all the work being done with the Inflation Reduction Act, but on truly a national scale uh, and working with organizations, the governments, and uh, you know, our members out there to make sure that they are aware of the changes. They're aware of the programs at the state level, um, and have the tools and resources, or at least an advocate to you know develop the tools and resources that they need to be successful um, when it comes to this Inflation Reduction Act. And today we talked with Frank uh, about some of the recent events. You know, we are coming off. You mentioned we're done with the primetime content. We're actually talking about primetime with Frank because he had uh, some special guests with him at the show uh, to dive into the Inflation Reduction Act uh, with our members and with our vendor partners, representatives from uh, EPA and the NASIO, which is the National Association of State Energy Officials, uh, and you know, had some great conversations with them. I was fortunate enough to sit down with them for a little bit and, and introduce myself um, and, and pick their brains around this topic, but it's been Frank uh, leading the charge and really doing... Um, you know, an immense amount of work on behalf of this channel uh, around this topic. So excited to get the latest updates from him for you this week and share them out. So let's dive into it. This is Frank Santner diving into the Inflation Reduction Act here on the Independent Thinking Podcast. All right, we are back on the Independent Thinking Podcast and Always a favorite when I can have Mr. Frank Santner, our uh, Senior Director of Business and Financial Services here at Nationwide Marketing Group, come on to talk shop, to talk Energy Star, to talk the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, it, it's great to have you on, man. How are you? It's always great to be on. Um, I did everything that you just said, and um, let's get to it. Yeah, dive right in. Why we we cut the pleasantries? We don't need all that. We, we got to talk shop. Let's let's, <laughs> let's get, get right into it. it. <laughs> well, before we do that, I we'll start. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about because there's updates, you know, past updates about events we we've been uh, attending and our own prime time included, and some awesome things that have happened there. To you know, what's coming up uh, coming down the pike uh, in, in the near future, and, and what we have going on, and then even maybe we'll be crazy and look ahead to next prime time already is that a possibility maybe we'll do that we'll we'll see but uh i want to start with today how are things today in your world and and the things that uh you track and follow here for nationwide and our members well looking at the what we want to talk about the inflation reduction act as the main topic and this is one where the amount of activity has increased significantly over the last several months uh, we went through a lull period the Department of Energy was trying to get states to apply for the Inflation Reduction Act. Most states did not have the resources to do that. And so it, it was it took a lot of work. In fact, in in many cases, the Department of Energy pr provided a good deal of the content to reply to their own, you know, requests for uh, proposals, which is kind of interesting, but you know it it is what it is. 
And, and they took uh, states kind of in waves of about five states. They would, they would help five states complete their applications and then get them ready to roll and then have them submit. So they, they, it was a gallant effort. And now we, we've crossed the 50% mark where there's more than 50% of the states that have applied. Uh, and there's a, a bunch of them that have now received the funding and then some of them that are received the funding and are preparing to launch. And most of the ones that have launched at this point have launched only parts of the program. Right. There's a much greater awareness in at the state level of, you know, what can we launch first? How can we fit this program into some programs we already have? Mm -hmm. Or is it not, is, it, is that not what we should do? Should we just start something totally to the side right what kinds of software do we have to build to work with the federal rebate system that the uh, that the department of energy built so the discussions that i've had recently with with states reflect the fact that the doe has done a great job of raising the education level raising the awareness of the program and what's what it will require to get the program to be launched right my mind's going a couple of ways. One is, uh, well, that a that's a great update um, because I think the last time we talked was before prime time in August, and I think there was only one state that was active in having their program out there. If I remember right, I think New York is that right? Yeah, that was New York, and New yep. York is, is pretty much the same point as they were before. Yeah, you've got Wisconsin that's launched, and you have uh, I think Rhode Island now launched. So there, then there's you know. California is way further down the path. They haven't launched really yet, but they are, you know, they Doing. they submitted their application. They're getting close. Uh, Florida has applied, which they hadn't before. Georgia had applied. North Carolina has applied. So yeah. if you look at the map, it's 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 literally still, it's like the domino effect, right? So they're yes, they're coming uh, through now. As as they are launching, are you noticing? Yeah, I know you mentioned they're, you know. They're, each state's going to take their own approach to this, but do you notice any? Uh, I almost think like how our members are, right? In best practice sharing and talking to one another, are they talking to one another? And you know, is it is it massive groupthink in terms of how they're launching these programs? Or you know, obviously every state's different and have they have their own processes and procedures. So I imagine you know there's some best practice sharing, but at the end of the day, they're doing kind of what works best for them. You know, uh, when we first, I, I've been involved in it since before the actual act was signed, which was in October of 2022. And before that, we went through a process with a bunch of the utility contractors to make an appeal that the programs run uniformly mm -hmm. so that we don't end up with 50 different programs. And uh, and and then they went through a evolution of a bunch of different stages. And what we're seeing now is that the states are collaborating with each other a lot. So there, there's a venue called NASIO, National Association mm -hmm. of State Energy Officials, that brings all of these people together. And they do like to hang out together. Um, they At the Energy Star meetings last week, they were they go to their own dinners. And uh, so they, they, there's a fair amount of familiarity. But what we're seeing is that the programs are all coming out different. Right. Uh, every, every state has nuances to it, even though, you know, at a high level, they're all the same. But once you get further into it, 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 it starts to uh, flake apart a little bit. So one of the states that that uh, did uh, also has launched is New Mexico. New Mexico was the first state yeah. to actually submit an application. Mm -hmm. And it took them a long time to launch, but they have successfully done that. But they've launched only a small portion of their program. It's actually a uh, uh, insulation, so do-it-yourself insulation, which our members are not involved in that anyway. Right. But they are in October. They're going to launch their appliance portion of their program. And uh, when I spoke to the lady that's responsible for the Inflation Reduction Act last week at the Energy Star meeting, she said that that you know, in terms of because one of the things you could do is you could target either low income. Right. Low and moderate income. So most are going to do either one or the other. She said, well, we're we're targeting only low income. She said, you may not realize this, but there's only one county in all of New Mexico that's not low income. Oh, wow. Wait, what? Whoa. So I think it's uh, Los, Al Los Alamos County. Right. And there's a federal 
governments, a bunch of uh, nuclear scientists that right. That, <laughs> that live there. Right. So the gotcha. If income, that's what we're if that's what we're considering the threshold for low income. <laughs> so everybody else is way yeah. below that. So in, yeah. in this one county, it's, it's crazy. Like the household income yeah. is like something that's only four hundred thousand or something. Wow, <laughs> that's like that. incredible. And then all the other counties are below that. So they have that very unique situation. So they're yep. going to focus not on moderate income, only low income. And that that's the only state that I know that's yeah. doing that. And as I said, they launched with one program, which is do-it-yourself weatherization, insulation. Right, right. Nobody else has done that. So their path is just not the Very same different. as everybody else's. And I don't know any two that are alike at this point. Now, have you talked to any members that um, are in states with active programs and and heard any feedback on how things are going or if they've realized any benefit from these programs being launched the uh in the state of new york we actually have, have a pretty good relation with nicerta which is the organization <laughs> in the state of of uh, new york that kind of manages inflation reduction the, the they have launched but they have not launched the appliance portion right the they're, they're kind of struggling with that a little bit so they launched uh, H an HVAC and it may include the uh, water heating portion that ties into this other state program that New York has had for a long time. Right. They have not had this type of um, appliance program and that they are targeting to launch. First, it was October. Now it's kind mm -hmm. of November. So, you know, even though there's a lot of activity. Yeah. The, the 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 notion of a state fully launching, we don't have a single state that at this point has launched all the programs. So I mean, there's a bunch of a bunch of states that are not ever planning to launch all the programs. They're only planning to launch one of the two programs. So just to review, the the um, here program is the one that is appliance related, mm -hmm. and and the appliance related is deals with cooking and drying and in yep. drying it's only heat pump dryers in cooking it depends on the state it could be right. electric cooking or electric and induction or it could be just induction depending on where where you're, where you're going in new york state it's only going to be induction cooking right so that kind of limits uh, it right there yeah again just a, another um reason why everything you're doing and kind of tracking all all the differences and variations from state to state obviously the retailers in those states are going to be listening to their uh, leaders and elected officials on kind of the direction they're heading in energy departments. But um, you know, to have that one source of truth for us is certainly a big benefit that uh, doesn't get talked about nearly enough, but also goes to show just how much preparation, you know, even though none of the, none of the appliance related programs have launched yet, they are still coming. So lots of education that still needs to happen and um, kind of a nice segue then to talk about what you have been doing uh, to keep retailers abreast of all that stuff. And, um, what's coming and, you know, have the conversations that need to ha be had uh, and doing so more most recently um, at, at, well, maybe not most recently because you were at that Energy Star meeting, but for our members uh, at Primetime. So talk about uh, you had a, a full slate of programming going on at Primetime. So catch those of us up that weren't. I, I'm not included in that list because I was there. But for those that weren't there, uh, you know, what you had going on at Primetime and and um, all that good stuff. Sure. We we we. Uh... We're very fortunate. We were very blessed to be able to bring together some some aspects of the program that were usually pretty hard to pull together. Uh, we were able to bring in uh, a gentleman from the U.S. Department of Energy. So we had him at the show. His name is Adam Morse, and he is a definitely an expert on the federal government side. So he knows where most states are. He kind of understands how they would implement the programs to a certain extent vis-a-vis -vis the federal rebate system so we had him we had a lady maddie kohler from nazio so mm -hmm. she is the one that knows many of the state energy officials because that's their association she is specifically focused on rebate programs within the states and the biggest one out there is inflation reduction so we had each of them had one-on-one -on -one sessions with retailers so retailers that want to specifically talk about their state or their program they were able to meet uh that's we awesome had, we had a dozen slots for each of those one-on-one -on -one. then adam morris did a separate nla 
talking about the the process, like because thinking about how the process will work for independent retail, it was th there's a few different paths that you can take. Yeah, one is more secure and automated, but requires a lot more development work. Yep. One is less secure, less automated, doesn't take a lot of setup time, but you got to make sure you have enough controls so you don't end up losing money. Right. So right. we kind of outline those. And, and I think that was helpful to uh, many members. These were recorded sessions also, so they're now yep. available. Uh, I don't know exactly where, but they right. are available. Yep. You may want to come to me and force me to find out where they are. <laughs> And, and then we had the third, which was really the the pinnacle of the whole thing was we said, look, we we know that everybody likes to hear from members. So how about if they hear from members, vendors, supplies manufacturers, mm -hmm. US Department of Energy and NASIO in a panel discussion. So this was designed as the people that are gonna benefit from the Inflation Reduction Act, other than the consumers, is going to be retailers and right. manufacturers. Yep. So let's set them up to have the ability to ask questions of both the, the NASIO and U U.S. Department of Energy so they could get their questions answered and then the, everybody in the audience can hear the, the questions and it would prime something in their mind about what are the things yeah. that they really need to know. And so that was a great session. Uh, in fact, people that I've told about it, they were people at at EPA or DOE yeah. were like, yeah, that that's wonderful to be able to bring all those parties together. In fact, that was something that they wanted to do at the Energy Star uh, products partner meeting last week, but they were not able to bring those bodies together. Well, they should have asked Mr. Frank Sander to get involved, uh, maybe. <laughs> could have <laughs> had it happen. <laughs> no, so that's the, awesome. So, the, you know, and, and this then led to what we know at this point is the most important thing that we can do is bring retailers together with the states. Yeah. Right. Because you have to form a relationship with your state. And the thing I'll tell you is that every single state absolutely wants to use independent retail. Yeah. When the Department of Energy created the program, they built it for big box stores. Right. The software they created was only thinking about big box stores. Well, about a year and a half ago, I was in a meeting with Karen Zelmar, who's is responsible for the Inflation Reduction Act program. And I said, wait a second here. How about independent retail? Where, <laughs> where's, what are you doing? Oh, we're going to create other workflows. Okay, where are those other workflows? Well, we haven't started working on them yet. Well, independent retail is here today. We're not the, yeah. an afterthought. So through that, that got a bunch of states sort of worked up and they, yeah, we do want to include independent retail. And so, you know, thing of beauty was last week when I was in Minneapolis for the Energy Star meeting and I got to meet with none other than Yeni Maestas. Now, maybe not pronouncing it correctly, a wonderful young lady that is running the Inflation Reduction Act in the state of New Mexico. And through another uh, lady, Maureen McNamara at the EPA. Mm -hmm. She is, this lady at the EPA, Maureen, is is the one, the interaction or the interface between the EPA, which manages Energy Star and yep. all the states is Maureen. So Maureen said, you need to meet Yenny. <laughs> you, she is here at this event. And so, uh, so the last day she brought Yanni to me to introduce me to her. And uh, Yanni said, well, I mean, you know, it's the last day. So are you going to be able to meet? And uh, I said, yes. And then she said, can you meet right now? <laughs> and I said, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so I sat down with this young lady for an hour. Wow. And she reviewed with me their strategy and how, what they're doing to make this program work for independent retail. And then of course I got back this week and the very first thing I did is I introduced her to Mike Baca from builder source mm -hmm. because we need to start with the biggest retailer. Yeah. Um, so Mike Baca lives in Santa Fe and so does she and her, so, so does she, because that's where the state yep. office is. And Mike Baca's mom 
retired from the same department as Yanni. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what a small he, world. Yeah, he said, I probably know Yanni. If I see her, I probably will recognize her. So that's it, awesome. It, is that level of connectivity, right? And and and, and uh, sort of engagement and connectivity that I mean, it's a, it's a huge personal passion of mine to bring people together, regardless. Absolutely, but to be able to bring them together in something that benefits both of them, benefits the the community, benefits the retailer, benefits the state. You know, that is my commitment to everybody listening to this podcast is you you put me on a state and, and say you want to get connected with somebody at the state level, I will get you connected. Guaranteed. Yeah. I now know enough people between EPA, DOE, NASIO, I yep. will find the person that you need to get in touch with. The uh, the visual I have in my head is those old like call centers, the phones with the the ladies <laughs> taking the cables out, putting them in different holes. That's Mr. You, Santner. You, <laughs> that's you. you. <laughs> that's yeah. what, that's yeah. you right now, making all those connections happen, yeah, so it, that it, it, you know it, you're it, talking to who you need to talk to, right? <laughs> and, and there's no, it's you don't need to wait until your state has even applied. Right. They they have now hired people. All these people that I met over the last week in the state energy offices. They've all been in their positions less than a year. Yeah. All right. So these are new people. They're very, very hungry. They have just right. a tremendous amount of energy. And so let's harness that energy. They're thinking about independent retail already anyway. Let's yeah. get you in touch with them because you may be able to influence how the program gets set up. I mean, right. I've seen this happen already where they want input and they are using that. I mean, these because these are not, you know, long-standing people have been under jobs for, for 20 years. These are right. fresh young blood ready yeah. to listen and ready to make things work. And even beyond, you know, you'll have the ability to influence those programs, but getting in on that ground level, you're, it sets you up for success when it eventually does launch uh, because you don't want to be behind the eight ball, you know, after the fact when these programs are already up and running, people know how they work and then you're having to catch up and get educated. So the sooner the better. The sooner the better. This is an area where even though the initial software was, as I said, it was designed for big box stores, uh, don't even worry about that. Right. The fact of the matter is that the the level of understanding of how the program works and being able to get to low to moderate income households and and be the the advocate for them to help them because there's a qualification process, there's coupon codes, there's a, quite yep. a few steps. Simplifying that for uh, somebody in your community, because all of you are out in your communities, mm -hmm. is a huge thing, is one that the big box stores are not able to do. Uh, in fact, big box stores, because they target the middle of the market, they are not set up to provide the kind of support that these programs will require and the, and the Retailers that could provide the support are going to be successful and are yeah. going to make a good amount of money out of this. You know, it, 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 this is a significant revenue opportunity to everybody out there. And and it, now is the time to get engaged. Like yeah. in the case of New York State, uh, and this will be the case in all states, you have to be a registered retailer to participate. So if you're not on the list of qualified retailers, you can't even participate. If somebody comes in your store, they want to, you know, they heard about these rebates. You're going to have to say, I, I can't do it because I'm not part of the program. Set up for it. So yep. now, now the, uh, the signups have started in New York state. And so if there's anybody in New York state that wants to know how to get signed up, I've got the link to do that. And, uh, and, and like every state's going to have nuances like this. Right. Uh, but, but it's up to the retailers to say, okay, I want to find this out or that out and then put me on the case to bird dog the thing through. No, that's awesome. And again, just, I, you know, I can't reiterate enough the, uh, the benefit to the member of having a resource like you within the organization who's doing that work <laughs> to making those connections and, and putting them in touch with the people they need to or vice versa, putting the people with the program in touch with the retailers that um, you know, can influence these programs or uh, make them aware of the challenges at, at that local level. So um, awesome to hear those well, updates. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I do, I yeah. do want to let you know that uh, it, it's, it's, it's thanks to Nationwide Marketing Group. Nationwide Marketing Group has had a commitment to sustainability, 
uh, for many years, dating back mm -hmm. to Rick Weinberg. Yep. You know, we won Partner of the Year for Sustained Excellence for the 10th consecutive year this year. And as a result of that, so, you know, this is way before I ever got involved yeah. with this. Rick sort of, he... He he did the sp he was did the digging Ooh, the dirty work <laughs> and that enabled <laughs> yeah. us to be in the position that we're in right now. You would not be able to just show up at the Energy Star meeting and say, "Hey, here I am." No. You know, yeah. let it make it all come it's... together. There's relationships that 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 Rick had that he's now handed over to me that I've then taken those try to grow them even further yeah. that enable this to be possible. I would not be able to stand in front of you or i'm actually sitting and <laughs> and say that you you put a challenge in front of me regardless of what it is related to inflation reduction and i will solve it if it wasn't for rick right. and the things that he did over the years and nationwide is the one who who you know out of their own hide in terms of sort of give back to a, a cause which is bigger than everything which is uh, the environment and yep. has done that year after year that is now paying off because we have yeah. the, the connections and the relationships and the understanding of how this whole thing works. The groundwork's been laid, um, and I, you know, it, it's been built over time too. I we don't have EPA showing up to two prime times in a row uh, if it, if it's not for all of that. Um, you know, the the work that had been done and um, relationships that have been built and. You know, showing up on a podcast and uh, this past March to you know being involved in sessions uh, at this past show, um, lots going on. It's exciting to see too, right? Because you know it, everyone uh, saw the work that Rick had done um, and I think appreciated it. And uh, you know, again, probably another underestimated uh, just the amount of effort that he put into it. But like to see where it's grown and how it's grown and what it's become today, it's it's awesome. And like, to your point, only something that you know, it happens because of the nationwide marketing group. Yes. And we, we are now at the point where we have people wanting to come to our show. Yeah. <laughs> so we have, That's awesome. Uh, we have now, based on the meetings that we had last week, we have utilities. So we, before, so let's say a year ago, we had never had anybody from the EPA come. Now yeah. we've had that happen. We never had anybody from DOE come. Yeah. Now we've had that happen. Yep. We never had anybody from NASIO. Okay. We've never had a utility come <laughs> to our show. That's never happened. Okay. So there's this very, very significant effort happening right now in California called Cal MTA. It's a market transformation organization that ultimately will encompass the entire state. Well, we met with the uh, one of the ladies there that runs it and told her about this event called prime time and she's like hmm, hmm. i need to be there like something i need to, i need to see right so that's awesome the, the awareness that there is this massive force called nationwide marketing group that can do significant things to help with sustainability and and uh, the environment that that we've let that one out <laughs> there's, there's high awareness. and so uh, and, and thank goodness I could do it with full confidence. Yeah, absolutely. The show that we put on is spectacular. The people from the government that have come to our shows, you know, Dan Cronin, who came from the from EPA, is now planning to come every year. He's one oh, that's awesome! He's planning yeah. to attend, right? So, getting that level of person who's who influences a lot of things that happen yeah. is a big deal. Like, for example, through Dan Cronin we were able to get the all-in-one unit included in some of the energy efficiency programs. Yeah. It had never been done. Wow. We, we, we kind of put it in his face a few times and then he ultimately <laughs> said, okay. That's awesome. Got that <laughs> like, so, I just need to get Frank off my back. <laughs> that was... right, exactly. I could be a big pest too. <laughs> no. <laughs> when necessary. <laughs> that's all. Well, that's, Hey, that's a good preview too of, uh, you know, what's to come because I think to your point, this is something, where it feels like a, an inflection point or, or like it's ready to take off, even even though it's been, you know, what, 16 years in the making, uh, 10 years of the, the sustained excellence to your point. But um, awesome. To, it, it really feels like we're at a turning point with like just the uh, the potential expansion and growth of uh, the program and its impact, um, you know, within the group and then within the members and, of, of course, within their community in turn, in turn with their communities. But um, nice little preview of what, 
possibly could be coming uh, in San Antonio this past March or this upcoming March, right? San Antonio. Yeah. Here we come. <laughs> so basically, um, you know, we've been going down this path, keep bringing in new partners, uh, gov federal government partners, and then working a lot with the manufacturers and trying to integrate everything that we do uh, because the Energy Star brand is only useful when it's part of a product. And, and uh, what we are thinking of is that, you know, we're going to ask for the world. We're going to ask for the moon and we'll see what happens. Right? We, we are probably going to ask some state energy officials to come to the show. Like, imagine if we were able to get somebody from the state energy official office from Austin, mm. right? I mean, Austin to San Antonio is a short drive, far. like yeah. a one hour drive to come to the show to get plant the seed because Texas is a big state. Texas actually yeah. has more money in Inflation Reduction Act than any other state, more than California. Wow. So if we could get somebody from that office to come to prime time and understand the independent retail channel, and then that person goes back and speaks to on, on our behalf to all of the other states, because they have a lot of these state meetings and says, yeah, nationwide, man, you got to connect with them. That's that is going to get you. That's that's the channel that's going to do the best for you in this program. That's awesome. Then, then I will say, like, wow, that is. Big. <laughs> you know, I'm looking to do something big, it's huge. Yeah, maybe hey, I can't accomplish that, but I'm going to shoot for the stars. That's what they say about Texas, right? Everything's bigger in Texas, so you might as well. For the stars, <laughs> the Texas star, the moon star. Yeah, it's incredible, man. Well, hey. Um, appreciate the update as always looking forward to continuing to follow. Uh, I know whether I want to or not, you're going to make me have you on the podcast for these updates. I love it. I love it though. <laughs> you, you could twist my arm all you want because it's always good to hear from you and see the work that you're doing. And, um, cause it's incredible uh, and needs to be talked about. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that we're able to do it on a regular basis. So, uh, Mr. Santner, I appreciate the update and, and look forward to seeing what's coming next. Well, just the last Go know, for it. thought is that, it's it's the work is only for the members. Yeah, right. It's, I'm not doing it for myself. If if I could make, you know, a lot of members more successful in the coming years, because this program runs till 2031, mm -hmm. then I will feel that I've done my duty and served the members well. That's awesome. Well, a, a good mic drop moment. Um, and I know that you you are doing right by them for sure. So it's uh, like I said, incredible to watch. Um, and and play just a small part in. So. We appreciate it and, and look forward to catching up again soon. Awesome. Thanks so much. Awesome. And thanks again to Frank. Like I said at the top, uh, a man that is just absolutely, uh, you know, you set a, a, a goal in mind for him and he is attacking the heck out of it and doing uh, more than, you know, just justice uh, for the independent channel on the Inflation Reduction Act and everything involved with that and, uh, you know, the Energy Star program, but um, really owning it and and showcasing his thought leadership in this space and just, um, you know, the immense amount of work that he's put into it. And it's awesome to see, awesome to be able to tap into, and of course, awesome for our independent retailers out there um, that are, you know, going to be able to benefit from this program, uh, if not already, you know, in the not too distant future. So, Appreciate Frank sharing his expertise and jumping into it with us. And as always, appreciate you listening to the Independent Thinking Podcast. And we'll catch you next time.